Hello everyone. Today we are going to deal with another optical property of semiconductor which is luminescence. So what actually is luminescence? What are the types of luminescence? Especially we are going to concern with respect to the semiconductors. So luminescence is a word derived from a Latin language where it can be divided as lumen and essence. Lumen means light in Latin or brightness and essence denotes the state. So how this phenomena is occurring in case of semiconductors we are going to study today. So first let us understand what actually is luminescence and then we are going to see how it occurs. So in our previous classes of optical properties of semiconductors we have dealt with several absorption phenomena like fundamental absorption, exciton absorption, absorption due to impurities and today using that knowledge we are going to understand the concept of luminescence. So once the electrons have been excited and excitation will be by the process of absorption and absorption of energy from the photon which is incident on it. So when a photon is incident on a semiconductor, the electrons which are present in the semiconductor will be excited because of absorption of radiation. And because of this, after getting excited, the distribution of electrons in the semiconductor is no longer in equilibrium state. Because of excitation, the state will be in non-equilibrium. And Whenever the state is in non-equilibrium, then the material tries to come back to its equilibrium state. That's why eventually they decay or de-excite into the lower states. And while this, while this happens, the radiation will be emitted in the process. And this emission of radiation due to the de-excitation of electron from higher state to lower state is termed as luminescence. And we are going to study it under optical property because this phenomena occurs only when the electron absorbs energy from the photon. So in simple words, electron in the semiconductor absorbs the energy from photon, gets excited, state is in non-equilibrium state and that's why it comes back to the lower energy state. In the process, it is going to emit some radiation. And this is nothing but the phenomena of luminescence. And if you compare it with fundamental absorption or any type of absorption process, it is reverse of it. Always absorption we explain in upward direction. But luminescence occurs in downward direction. That is, it will be observed when there is a transition from conduction band to valence band. When there is a transition from valence band to conduction band, it is absorption. When the transition is from conduction band to valence band, we observe luminescence. So, this is the main difference between absorption and luminescence. Then, Coming to the types of luminescence, generally corresponding to different absorption process, when you just reverse it, there are different types of luminescence mechanisms. And I am just collecting some main types of luminescence process, which are, first one is electroluminescence. Here, the stimulus is electric current. So when the electric current is passed through a p-n junction, excitation takes place and when it is de-excited, so because of the de-excitation, the energy will be released. So it is coming out as a light. So this is the phenomena which is taking place or it is a principle behind LEDs we can see. So this is first type of luminescence in semiconductors. Coming to the second type, it is photoluminescence. Here, 
द एक्साइटेशन इज बाय ऑप्टिकल एब्जॉर्बन एंड दिस इज द मेन टाइप ऑफ लुमिनेसेंस वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन टूडेज क्लास बिकॉज वी आर स्टडिंग दिस अंडर द ऑप्टिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ सेमी कंडक्टर्स मीन्स द स्टिमुलस हैज टू बी अ फोटोन एंड विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू दैट हाउ लुमिनेसेंस प्रोसेस ऑकर्स इज वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी सो मेन कंसेप्ट इज फोटो लुमिनेसेंस कमिंग टू द थर्ड टाइप ऑफ लुमिनेसेंस इट इज कैथोडो लुमिनेसेंस हियर द एक्साइटेशन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स विल बी बाय यूजिंग हाई एनर्जी इलेक्ट्रॉन बीम सो ऑल दीज टाइप्स आर बेस्ड ऑन द टाइप ऑफ इनपुट वॉट वी आर गिविंग ड्यू टू विच द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर गोइंग टू एक्साइट सो वेन इट इज इलेक्ट्रिक करेंट वी हैव इलेक्ट्रोलुमिनेसेंस वेन इट इज अ फोटोन वी हैव फोटोलुमिनेसेंस वेन वी आर यूजिंग अ हाई एनर्जी इलेक्ट्रॉन बीम इट इज कैथोडोलुमिनेसेंस एंड फाइनली यू आर हैविंग द फोर्थ टाइप ऑफ लुमिनेसेंस विच इज थर्मो लुमिनेसेंस विच टेक्स प्लेस इन सेमी कंडक्टर द थिंग अबाउट दिस टाइप ऑफ लुमिनेसेंस इज दैट इट ऑकर्स एट लो टेम्परेचर्स वेन द कैरियर्स are first excited by some means the electrons will be frozen in their trapping side and when the solid is heated they are going to be thermally agitated and that's why electron finally de excite and release certain radiation and this is nothing but the phenomena of incandescence which we generally refer so both are one and the same so these are the main four types of luminescence process which take place in semiconductor there are different luminescence process like chemiluminescence etc but these are main in semiconductor then let us continue our discussion with respect to photoluminescence so we have already understood what actually is a luminescence process and photoluminescence means the excitation of electron in the semiconductor will be due to incident radiation that is because of the photons and let us see how it takes place so this process can be divided into three stages first is excitation second one is relaxation and third one is emission so let us understand using the band diagram semiconductors we have already studied the band diagram we have a valence band we have a conduction band valence band is at lower energy conduction band is at higher energy and e is directly proportional to k square that's why we have a parabolic nature of energy bands so in semiconductors we know valence band consists of a number of electrons when a photon is incident over the semiconductor the energy of the photon will be absorbed by the electron which is present in the valence band and the electron will excite into conduction band this is the first process which is called as excitation stimulus is photon and response is excitation of electron into conduction band and coming to the second step so when the electron is excited to conduction band it is in the state of non equilibrium or you can say it is free to move and in such condition it is going to relax means it can interact with the surroundings due to which it is going to come to the lower energy state this is called as relaxation and finally after that emission takes place that is the electron d excites back to the valence band we can say that is the lower energy level and in the process a photon which was absorbed similar type of photon will be emitted means again radiation is coming out so we are having a output which is in the form of radiation that's why the outcome is in the form of light and it is called as luminescence so these are the three step process which we can observe in semiconductors but what is the condition so the emitted light 
will have generally higher wavelength than absorbed light so it is obvious after absorption there will be some amount of reduction in the frequency of photon or re reduction in the frequency so that the emitted photon will have a lesser energy lesser energy means lesser frequency which is implying us higher wavelength so when you compare the wavelength of incident light which is involved in absorption so that wavelength is lesser when compared to emitted light wavelength so with respect to frequency it is reverse absorbed light is having higher frequency and emitted light is having lower frequency that is higher energy and lower energy and the condition is what we have already discussed so first thing we need to remember is the energy for luminescence that is excitation to take place the photon energy should be greater than the energy gap only then the electron which is present in valence band will excite to conduction band if it is not exciting then there won't be luminescence taking place so what is the use of it so the application of photoluminescence is that it is an important technique in order to measure the purity of the sample and also crystalline quality of semiconductors and by studying this we can also quantify the amount of disorder present in the semiconductor system the disorder may be with respect to structure how the structure has changed or what are the impurities or defects which are present in the semiconducting crystal or even compositional disorder like if you just use some chemicals and if you prepare a semiconductor whether it is properly ordered after composition or it is having any kind of a disorder that also can be studied by this phenomena so this is the main application or significance of photoluminescence in semiconductor then coming to the next part which is about photoluminescence and this can be divided into two forms photoluminescence generally we have two types of luminescence we say photoluminescence and chemiluminescence so photoluminescence is triggered by a photon chemiluminescence is triggered by the chemicals or chemical reaction and in photoluminescence we have two different forms one is fluorescence another one is phosphorescence so what actually is the difference between the two it is only with respect to the lifetime so in fluorescence during the time of excitation and after the excitation the luminescent emission may take place spontaneously means there will be immediate decay or de excitation of electron from the excited state means the light emission will just stop after incident ray is switched off so when a light is incident excitation takes place and soon after the excitation the electron won't stay in the higher energy state for a long time suddenly it will de excite emitting the radiation and as soon as the incident photons are not supplied so the source is switched off in that case the light emission also stops that is called as fluorescence and this is having some general examples like fluorescent bulbs or fluorescent toys are there jellyfish all these are examples in general then coming to phosphorescence here also first excitation take place then relaxation and de excitation but the difference is that it is a delayed type of phenomena that is luminescence will continue for some time after excitation once the excitation takes place the electron from the valence band jumps into the conduction band after absorbing the photon then it stays there for certain time and slowly the luminescence will take place and as a result 
even when the source is turned off still the light will be emitting not it may be for just few seconds up to few hours it depends on the type of the material so this is the difference between fluorescence and phosphorescence it is only based on the you we can say lifetime of that electron an example is like glow of a clock dial or toys etc so clock dial we generally observe that even when the light is switched off we can just observe the dials in the dark also so that is the process of phosphorescence but in fluorescence it is not going to take place just when you switch off the bulb it is going to become fully dark so this is the difference between fluorescence and phosphorescence so in today's class we discussed about luminescence what is the process what are the different types of luminescence in semiconductors and two forms of photoluminescence which are fluorescence and phosphorescence so this is the end of optical properties of semiconductors so in my next class we will be dealing with a new topic which is about low dimensional semiconductor structures so if you are having any doubt you can just comment below i will be happy to help you thank you